All right, so the next area that we're going to do is associational rights. Um, associational rights are different from free speech rights, um, but they are. They're related. They're strongly related. Um, so what, what, in essence, is an associational right? Um, it is the ability of a group and the authority to determine its own membership um, and to do so in a way that is in expression of the values that that organization stands for. So an example of an associational right. Um, well, the Boy Scouts obviously is going to be the most salient example that we're going to give, but also understanding that um, Girl Scouts could be an example and we're going to understand that both of these examples are stuck back about 10 years ago before the de distinction between Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts was made meaningless after they both co-integrated. Um, but any sort of private organization has the authority to determine its membership and to determine who they don't want to be members and determine classes of people that they don't want to be members. Um, unless under some particular circumstances, like they're providing um, uh, necessary goods and services. So uh, that, that would really be the only distinction. Uh, when we think about sort of associational rights that it's very basic sense, we can think about the masters, and I'm, I'm using golf as an example, so you can realize how far we've gone off the deep end. Um, but up until very recently, um, uh, Augusta National, which is where the Masters um, golf tournament is held, um, was exclusively white. And because they're a private organization, they, they could discriminate on the basis of race. Um, there was no, no way to get past that as private organization. Private organization makes their rules. And so these sorts of associational rights um, uh, are, are, are part of the definition of what the First Amendment is. And, and in the next case that we do, which is Boy Scouts of America v. Dale, um, we see how associational rights are um, important to organizations. Uh, so a little bit of uh, prerequisite to this, just again, to tell you all a little bit more about myself. Um, so as you can see, this case takes place in the year 2000. In 1998, um, I was awarded as an Eagle Scout. I am an Eagle Scout. Um, and so I was around during all of this time when all of this case is being litigated. Um, and when the Boy Scouts of America decided to um, press this case to the Supreme Court, I was, you know, a sophomore in college. I was year all's age. Um, and I returned um, my Eagle Award upon their defense of this. Um, and the Boy Scouts have since come around completely from their standing, uh, from their viewpoint uh, in this case, uh, and now allows um, individuals who identify as GLPTQ um, to not only be members, but also uh, serve as leadership. Um, but it was a very divisive issue at the time. Given all of that said, about what my background is, I will say the Supreme Court still makes the correct decision in this case. So another example of what your personal policy preferences would be, um, being very different than what courts should do. And that's, that's something we need to focus on um, as individuals, is recognizing that we could want very different policy from what courts decide, but courts are still doing it the right way. And I hope I can explain it to you in this case. Um, so in the background of this case, um, a, a leader in the Boy Scouts um, had their position revoked um, when after giving an interview to a, a college, um, I think it was college newspaper, um, they were outed as being homosexual and a gay rights activist. Um, the Boy Scouts being a private organization um, identified itself as attempting to instill values that it closely associated with into young people. And amongst those values, um, they specifically thought that homosexuality made individuals morally unclean, which is being morally clean is one of the tenets of the Scout law. Um, so 
they revoked his membership and the meaning, the, the, the reason why which they did so, which they told him, was they informed him that they specifically forbid membership to homosexuals. He sued the Boy Scouts of America, claiming that the Boy Scouts policy was discriminatory and violated New Jersey's public accommodations laws, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation in terms of public accommodation. The lynch here is, is, is odd because public accommodations are generally thought of as things um, like uh, restaurants, water fountains, movie theaters, um, buses, those sorts of things are public accommodations. Uh, but membership in a private group has not traditionally been considered a public accommodation. Um, there is no part of an individual's life, for example, that would be harmed by not being able to be a member of the Boy Scouts of America. That individual is not going to be um, hurt in any way, and therefore it probably isn't a public accommodation. Now, the Supreme Court of New Jersey held that the statute in question absolutely applied to the Boy Scouts, um, and that there was no exemption to the status, even though the Boy Scouts of America, despite my slide saying Boy Scouts of American, uh, the Boy Scouts of America um, are, are a private organization. Um, the, the New Jersey court also held that the Boy Scouts constitutional right of freedom by association did not enable them to exclude an individual on the basis of their homosexuality. So for the New Jersey Supreme Court, Dale's membership, um, did not violate the Boy Scouts right of exo expressive association, um, because his, his inclusion would not affect in any significant way, the existing members ability to carry out their very purposes. And what the New Jersey Supreme Court here is arguing is that by including Dale, that doesn't stop the Boy Scouts from voicing their opinion that homosexuality is morally unclean. It doesn't prevent them from stating that as one of their guiding values. Inclusion does not stop the organization from being able to express. Um, however, the United States Supreme Court in a 5-4 decision reverses the decision of the New Jersey Supreme Court. And the question in this case, the issue, is whether uh, the New Jersey statute and the decision of the New Jersey Supreme Court violates the Boy Scouts of America's right of expressive association, which is to say that to make decisions based upon your membership, um, in line with your own values. And the court in a 5-4 decision says um, that yes, uh, the lower court's decision and the law in question does violate the Boy Scouts of America's right to expressive association. Um, the court says that implicit in the right to engage in activities protected by the First Amendment is the corresponding right to associate with others in a pursuit of a wide variety of political, social, economic, educational, religious, and cultural ends. This right is very crucial is, is crucial in preventing that the majority does not impose its views on groups that would otherwise express perhaps unpopular opinions. So ultimately for them, the freedom of association um, plainly presupposes the freedom not to associate. So if organizations have the freedom to associate with whom they wish, a plain understanding of that is groups also um, have the authority to choose whom not to associate with. They go on to say that the forced inclusion of an unwanted individual in a group infringes upon that group's freedom of expressive association. If the presence of that person affects in any significant way the group's ability to advocate its public or private viewpoints. So it might be seen as exceedingly hard for the Boy Scouts of America to outwardly say we disapprove of, um, of homosexual lifestyle and homosexual behavior. By the way, here is one of our leaders who is an outspoken gay rights activist. The argument being it may underpin their position and their outward advocacy of this position um, by Dale's inclusion um, uh, within the Scouts. Um, there are a few dissents. 
Justice Stevens dissents. Um, and Justice Stevens dissents, while the scouts claim that they teach their members to be morally straight and clean, they also specifically state that sex education is not to be taught at home or in the, is to be taught at home or in the schools, but not by the scouts. So he points out a, a, a nuance in the Boy Scouts position here is that, well, if you're claiming that morally straight and clean means that you don't approve of homosexuality, you can't also hold the position that you don't talk about anything involving sex, because at least in part, we understand that identifying as being an individual who is homosexual does have sexual connotations. Your, your expressive rights at the very least should be continuous. This is not a very persuasive argument by Stevens. Um, however, he does end with a very fairly prescient statement, especially for the year 2000. He argues that unfavorable opinions about homosexuals have ancient roots. Over the years, however, interaction with real people rather than mere adherence to traditional ways of thinking about members of unfamiliar classes have modified these opinions. That such prejudices, prejudices are still prevalent and that they have caused serious and tangible harm to countless members of the class New Jersey seeks to protect are established matters of fact that neither the Boy Scouts nor the court itself disputes. That harm can only be aggravated by the creation of a constitutional shield for a policy that it itself is the product of a habitual way of thinking about strangers. So Stevens, at this point, the oldest guy on the court, by a lot, not, not a small amount. Stevens at this point is way over the pale in terms of age as compared to the other members of the court. Um, and he signals that we're, in this case, what we're dealing with is we're, we're dealing with a policy reinforced by the government that allows discrimination based upon ancient stereotypes. He's not wrong there. However, his solution for that would be to make private groups have to not be able to determine their own membership, which not a good stance. Stevens also is the individual who later on um, makes a, a, a number of, of decisions, um, not writing himself, but in the, voting with the majority, that ultimately leads to a significant amount of gay rights protection. Now, we're going to leave off there and ask questions because I don't want this part to get recorded. But you have to understand how much, how much shit changed, changes in 21 years. Um, when I took, when I, 1998, I was 18 years old. Uh, so in 2000, I was 20, which tells you exactly how old I am. Um, outwardly being anti-homosexual and anti-gay rights was the majority of position in the year 2000. If you look back at polling data, that's what the majority agreed with. 20 years later, that is not the majority opinion. In fact, we've gotten almost to the point where there is two, not full acceptance, but there's bipartisan acceptance of a protection for LGBTQ rights, which to me is just absolutely mind blowing. Um, because that sort of policy change and opinion development usually takes way longer than 20 years. Um, way, way longer. Uh, and so the environment that we're talking about in making the decision in 2000, when we at the end of this class re revisit um, a very similar issue, at least in terms of um, gay rights advocacy, um, in Obergefell v. Hodges, uh, which was decided in 2013, in 13 years, we're talking about a massive change in public opinion. 
opinion change doesn't happen that massive in 13 years. And gay rights is one of the very few areas that I can identify in which it has. Um, and I'm still shocked by how we've gotten to where we are considering where we were and how not long ago. Um, I know most of you aren't 21 years old, so you weren't around when this case was decided, but I can assure you uh, it's not ancient history. It, it really was like, in my mind, yesterday um, and very salient to who I was as, as a young person. So, uh, yeah, the case is rightly decided. It's absolutely bad policy. Um, and the Boy Scouts have obviously since this time changed their stance um, significantly, um, so much to now include basically anyone, um, no matter of sexual identity at all. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's just a very different place.